It's Fernando Ruiz Art. Hi, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about something pretty um, useful in all forms of basic drawing, which is cross hatching. I don't know if there's if it's hyphenated or not, but I put a hyphen in there. And cross hatching is a form of rendering. And it's a pattern whereby you lay down a pattern of lines going in one direction. And on top of that, you lay another pattern of lines going in another direction. And why do we cross hatch? Well, we cross hatch uh, primarily for two reasons. Number one, it's good as a form of shading. And number two, it's good as a form of adding texture because cross hatching, um, cross hatching can look can give something kind of a rough, imperfect uh, surface quality. So um, those are the two reasons why why cross hatching, and it's also a nice uh, design element. Um, the key, of course, is to cross hatch well to cross hatch properly. It's very easy to cross hatch and make it sloppy. When you've got lines going every which way, this starts looking like chicken scratch. This doesn't look like good cr cross hatching. It's best when you lay down a pattern and I you don't have to go as quickly as I'm doing here, but you can and then lay down another pattern. In fact, I like to move kind of briskly just to avoid my cross hatching from looking unnatural or um, too, too stiff, too clean, which uh, can also be a danger. Um, okay, now a good exercise for cross hatching. And I actually talked about this at uh, in one of my classes this morning at the Kubert School where I teach. Uh, if you guys didn't know, I have been teaching at the Kubert School. Uh, this is my 25th year teaching. Actually, 2001, this August, will make 26 years teaching there. And I've taught a number of classes from basic drawing to narrative art, which is essentially our comic book class, um, design, figure drawing, a lot of different classes. So uh, this morning, the topic of cross hatching came up, and I thought, you know, this would make a good video. I think a lot of people would probably be interested in this. And um, if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments below and tell me never to do this again. Uh, okay. Now, what I'm doing here, this is a classic exercise. If any of you have ever been in an art class before, you probably had to make one of these. And this is what we call a tonal bar, uh, also called a gradation, gradation scale, uh, maybe a gradation bar. It goes by many names, but it's all basically the same thing. And what you do is you rule off a strip, a rectangle, maybe two inches, and I didn't do two inches here, but let's pretend I did, maybe two inches by eight inches. And I didn't do eight inches either, but let's pretend I did. Now, what you do is in this space, and I didn't fill it out, uh, but in this space, you make a gradation from dark to light or light to dark, e either way. But you're making a gradation going from, the, from an extreme white to an extreme black. Now, tonal bars are used for really for lots of different things. Um, you know, you, you can make one. Uh, we'll, we're going to do one with cross hatching, but you could also do one just with shading, uh, with charcoal pencils, regular pencils. Uh, you could do it with paints, um, any, anything uh, just to be able to gradate. Uh, to be able to to go from that extreme from one extreme to the other um, and this happens to be a really good form of practice and exercise for your cross hatching so 
So from this end, I'm going to I'm going to start out really dark. I'm going to get really really black. And as I go down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break up this black. And I'm going to break this up into lines, into patterns of lines. And I want to go back. I want to make the transition as smooth as possible. So what I'm doing is I'm making my lines a little further apart, a little finer. And oh, let me go down a little bit more. A little finer, a little finer, a little lighter until I get to the white. Now that's just one pattern of lines. On top of this, I'm gonna go back to the black and I'm gonna come in at a different angle and I'm gonna layer my hatching with some cross hatching. And as I go down again, I'm gonna I'm gonna lessen the density of these lines. I'm gonna make these lines lighter and lighter until I get to the white. So I get a nice range, and this could be a little smoother. That that's a little that's a little too sharp. So I could actually I could cheat a little and go in and smooth that out a little bit more. Um, now the tonal bar, the tonal bar works on, and this could be a little smoother too. This starts getting a little sloppy down here, but let's say I smooth it out. Okay, now the tonal bar works on two levels. Number one, there's the physical act of just going from dark to light, which I just did. Just being able to smoothly transition from the extreme black to the extreme white. So there's that. Um, the other, the other way this this benefits us is it makes us aware of this entire spectrum of light to dark. And a lot of times when we think of uh, a range of tones, and that's what this is, tones, uh, we tend to think of black, we think of white, and maybe we think of one gray. But there's a whole range here. There's, there's obviously there's light gray, medium gray, dark gray, darker dark gray, and of course black. So, uh, if nothing else, the whole the the bar just makes us aware of that whole range, that whole spectrum. Um, so, if, if this may be something uh, you may want to try at home, just to practice uh, doing a smooth. Um, a smooth execution of, uh, of cross hatching. Uh, it, it's a great exercise. Now I want to show you another exercise is to, uh, cross hatch some basic shapes. So I'm going to lay down, I'm going to lay down a, a sphere. Okay. Let's, let's center this sphere, just a big ball. And then, you know, it's not going to be a very precise ball or a very exact ball. Let's, let's pretend it is. And it's on a ground. Now, this ball, I want to in, have in mind, where's the light source for this ball? Let's pretend it's up here. My happy light source. And it's shining light down on my ball. So this side of the ball is, is going to be darker. Okay? So let's look at that side of the ball. So this side of the ball... There is what we call a core shadow, and that's what I'm putting down first. And I'm laying down my, my cross hatching. The core shadow is the darkest part of the ball. We have to think of the ball as this three-dimensional shape. And what that means is light isn't just gonna touch this ball and just stop. Light is actually gonna go all the way around this ball. It's gonna feel its way around the ball. And notice, I'm not taking this core shadow, this dark, dark shadow, all the way to the edge of the ball because I wanna leave room on the ball, not only for the, for the shadow, but for what we call reflected light, which is when light goes past the ball and bounces back onto it. So this side of the ball is gonna be darker than the side of the ball being lit. But it's not gonna be as dark as our core shadow. So I'm gonna go in there with a little bit of hatching, lighter, less dense hatching, and maybe I need to darken up my core shadow. 
a little bit. And my core shadow is also going to get lighter as it moves towards the light. And I want this to be a nice smooth transition as well. Notice I'm not just hatching around in all sorts of directions, every direction. Um, I'm keeping it natural, but I'm also trying to keep it nice and neat. And, uh, of course, as always with pencil, let's say you went in and maybe you 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 did too much of the ball. You, you rendered too much. Well, that's why we've got erasers. We could always go in, give ourselves a little bit of a highlight, maybe a little bit of a highlight down here. And, uh, you know, your, your ball becomes shiny again. Just restoring the shape. Uh, I could also, I could also ha cross hatch a cast shadow for my ball. Did I ever do a video on, on cast shadows and perspective? I love doing that. That, that. that would be, I gotta check my library. I always, I always confuse what I've done videos for, for what I, for what I'm intending to do videos for. That's why I, I sometimes ask this stuff out loud. And I also confuse what I've talked about on video with what I've talked about in my classes. So a lot of this stuff I'm talking about over and over again. So you want, again, grade eight this, make this as smooth as possible. The other danger with cross hatching is making everything kind of fuzzy, which is also why you want to be, you, you don't want to go too crazy with your cross hatching. So there we have a sphere. Okay. The other basic shape you want to play with is a cube. Oh, let's bring that more into the center. And cubes are great because we don't have to worry about the smooth transitions with the cube, okay? The, the cube has hard edges. A cube is what we call a geometric shape. That means it's got nice hard edges, it's got sharp lines, corners. So now, let's, we may as well use the same light source, this time going in this direction. So now what's gonna happen is this plane on this cube, this is devoid of light. So I'm gonna hatch this very densely, very darkly. This is gonna be the darkest part of my cube. I'm gonna, my hatching is gonna be thick lines, close together, very close together, to make this nice and dense. Now the side, this side of the cube, that is catching some light, but it's not catching light very directly. So this is going to be hatched, cross-hatched lighter than this side. And ideally, once I've laid in this, this hatching, if I've done it right, and notice I'm, I'm doing this lighter, okay? If I've, if I've done this right, I wouldn't even need these outlines. The, the difference, the contrast in tones from one plane to the next would be enough to define my cube for me. Now the top here is probably what would be catching the most light. So I'm gonna keep that nice and fine and light, maybe darken this side a little bit to create a little bit more contrast between that and the top and darken this to make it more extreme. And if I wanted to, I could throw a little bit of a of a cast shadow here too. So these are a couple of exercises you could try at home, try on your own. Try to uh, cross hatch a sphere, cross hatch a, a a cube, and try and make your own tonal bar. Uh, and really just just breaking out a, a blank piece of paper and just doing, you know, instead of doodling, just laying down patterns of lines like this. Notice also, I don't know if I've shown this on, on camera, but when I'm holding my pencil, when I'm rendering, 
Notice how high up I'm holding my pencil. This keeps my, this forces me to be delicate with my pencil. I'm using my pencil the way I would use a, a paintbrush. I'm holding it up high, and this allows me to, to stay nice and light with my lines, nice and delicate with my lines. So I know a lot of us tend to, uh, we're used to choking up on the pencil point. We were used to, you know, really working like this. Try it. Try this. It may it may feel a little foreign, a little alien to you at first, but um, but give it a shot, and uh, and uh, certainly let me know how it goes. So those are a few quick pointers in cross hatching. I hope uh, I hope this helps. I hope uh, you guys will give this a shot. Uh, and if you have any questions, please please let me know. Um, you know, if we if we need to do a part two to this, uh, by all means, uh, let me know. So uh, let me know in the comments below. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please click like, please subscribe, please share, uh, and please keep drawing and come back next time. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. See you next time.